Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. When the Empire was established, Emperor Palpatine's main goal was to create a massive military industrial complex that could support an even larger Imperial Navy. Through sheer power and might, Palpatine was going to control the galaxy one system at a time with his massive fleet. But the reality was the Galactic Empire would not be able to just hammer its way through every delicate political situation or domestic instability. And so, during the transition between the Republic and the Empire, the state's clandestine organizations and military intelligence increased tremendously in size and the type of operations they undertook. And while the rank-and-file stormtroopers, army troopers, and navy troopers are oftentimes depicted in films as incompetent, the various Imperial Special Forces were highly efficient. In a way, it reflects our own world's geopolitical reality, which features a gradual shift to highly trained operators in lieu of larger conventional infantry forces. And so today we'll take a look at all of the various Imperial Special Forces groups, discuss what kind of uh, roles they have, and we'll also draw some comparisons between them and some real-life counterparts. During the Clone Wars, the Republic Intelligence Services were gradually built up in size as the war group. During the Clone Wars, this agency was mainly used to collect information on enemy troop movements and infrastructure. The Republic Intelligence Services were involved in an attempt to back-channel peace talks between the Confederacy and the Republic. They were also involved in planning and debriefing the Citadel rescue mission. In this way, the Republic Intelligence sort of represented the Office of Strategic Services, or the OSS. This was the American precursor to the CIA, which was established during World War II. Like the OSS, the Republic Intelligence Services had to kind of figure out all of its rules and protocols on the run. This was a byproduct of a thousand years of peace and lack of a federal military in the Republic. And because this was a new agency, the majority of the operatives in the Republic Intelligence Services were young and idealistic individuals who truly believed in the Republic. And so when the Empire rose after Order 66, many individuals within the Republic Intelligence Services were purged, including its director and many senior members. After the war, the Republic Intelligence Services was reorganized into the Imperial Intelligence Services. This is a much larger and better funded organization, partly because the Imperial military had grown so much in size. It had a much wider range of responsibilities and many different subgroups like the Military Department of Advanced Weapons Research, the Naval Intelligence Agency, and of course the infamous Def Troopers. I know by Def Troopers I don't mean this excellent zombie genre story set in the Star Wars universe, which I highly recommend. I mean these guys, specialized stormtroopers who may or may not be the results of a highly unethical experiment that involved reviving dead tissue and bodies. Named by Palpatine himself, these elite troopers were trained in VIP protection along with a variety of direct action missions that included guerrilla warfare and assassinations. Death troopers were famous for never leaving much of a trace behind them when they finished a mission. Combine that with their helmets vocal scramblers, which made them sound very inhuman, and you had a very terrifying group of operators. Director Norson Krennic, who was a part of the Imperial Military Special Weapons Division, would always have a platoon of death troopers with them for protection, but also as muscle. These death troopers kind of function a lot like uh, private military contractors and risk management companies here in our own world. In Iraq and Afghanistan, the U.S. military actually contracts private security firms, which hire former Tier 1 special operators, to protect important local officials. If Imperial Intelligence is more like a mixture between military intelligence and the CIA, then the ISB is more like a mixture of the FBI, NSA, and maybe the Gestapo. Labeled as a law enforcement agency, the ISB is Palpatine's main weapon against a civilian uprising and domestic instability. The Empire has a massive surveillance network that monitors the everyday activities of all of its civilians. During the Galactic Civil War, the ISB would even monitor the helmet microphones of stormtroopers on patrol in an effort to limit desertion. This is a completely new organization created right after the rise of the New Order. It grew from a handful of agents to essentially twice the size as Imperial Intelligence. In many ways, uh, the ISB represents a lot of the duties that the legendary Kopnor uh, political faction had. As the rebel threat grew and Emperor Palpatine became more paranoid and vindictive, the ISB also became more powerful. And while the majority of the ISB's manpower is dedicated to information collection and monitoring, you also had special field agents like Agent Callus. These individuals would work for the investigations and internal affair branches in the ISB. 
They would be deployed with military units and watch out for disloyal Imperial soldiers or help break apart local insurgencies. ISB agents, despite being law enforcement officers, could co-op Imperial military units for specific missions if they are granted the authority to do so. ISB agents also have their own specialized training, armor, and weapons. Because of their close connection with the Emperor, they were feared by all, including members of the military. Their real-life equivalent would be one of the various secret polices used by totalitarian regimes here on Earth, mixed with a bit of political commissar and FBI field agent. One of the first things Emperor Palpatine did after the rise of the New Order was reassess the economic costs of the clone trooper program. Although the clone troopers were one of the finest military forces ever assembled, it was also one of the most expensive ones to maintain as well. There are also some loyalty issues that were beginning to develop in the rank-and-file clones. And so an ambitious vice admiral by the name of Rampart began supervising the recruitment and training of the Empire's first non-clone troopers in a program known as War Mantle. These soldiers would be known as the Elite Squad Troopers, and they would be led by Clone Commander Sniper CT-99904 Crosshair. Drawn from several different planets in the Empire, these were civilian volunteers who also had a fanatic belief in the Imperial cause. And although Rampart believed these individuals would be superior to the clones, all signs show that they are nowhere near as capable and exhibit the usual problems you get with a non-clone conscription or volunteer army. During one of their first missions, one elite squad trooper fails to obey commands and ends up immediately getting executed by the commanding officer. The rest of the squad gets killed shortly after. Inferno Squad was a very unique Imperial Special Forces Commando unit that was commissioned by Admiral Garrick Versio of the Imperial Security Bureau. This was a small squad of commandos that one might expect to see within the Imperial Army or Stormtrooper Corps. They were highly trained in direct action missions and heavily armored and armed for a variety of very violent jobs. But Inferno Squad was actually part of the ISB and had a similar chain of command to ISB agents like Callus. Inferno Squad would also occasionally take part in covert operations that required them to go deep undercover. The unit directly reported to Admiral Versio and were designed to go after some of the most hardened and extreme militant groups challenging the Empire. Inferno Squad's first mission was to infiltrate the terrorist organization known as the Dreamers, led by Saw Gerrera. Inferno Squad would also play a big part in Operation Cinder, a part of Palpatine's contingency plan in case he dies in a giant fiery explosion. What made Inferno Squad so unique was that each one of its members was trained in a wide variety of different skills. This meant that they could pilot starfighters and even large armored vehicles. They could also engage in CQB fights and larger conventional firefights as well. As a unit, they were extremely flexible and autonomous and based out of their own Imperial Navy Corvette. The 204th Imperial Fighter Wing, also known as Shadow Wing, was one of the Empire's earliest TIE fighter wings. It was made up of completely volunteers and became one of the best units in the entire Imperial Navy. As the Galactic Civil War entered its last days, the Empire became more erratic and carried out more punitive Scorched Earth missions in order to keep resources out of the hands of the Rebellion. Shadow Wing would become famous for their retaliatory attacks on civilian targets and the massacre of innocent civilians, usually caught up in transports or shipyards. The 204th would play a big role in Operation Cinder as well and would be hunted down by the Republic Special Forces fighter wing known as Alphabet Squadron. What made the 204th fighter wing so deadly was not its dedication to the Empire, but because of the cunning leadership of Colonel Sakara Nurus, aka the Grandmother. She helped create a sense of purpose and cohesion amongst her pilots even as the Empire crumbled around them. While most individuals in her position would use a fighter wing as a stepping stone to a higher political position in the Navy, Colonel Nurus tried tries her best to keep the unit alive and fighting. Lastly, we have the Inquisitorious Organization. Also directly created by Emperor Palpatine, this program was started immediately after Order 66. Its main goal was to hunt down the surviving members of the Jedi Order and execute them. Led personally by Darth Vader and another Jedi turned dark side user known as the Grand Inquisitor, these four sensitive Jedi hunters were mainly former Jedis themselves. While they weren't the most skilled individuals with the Force, they had numbers and resources on their side. This included the very impressive Purge Stormtroopers. These were especially trained and somewhat expendable death squads used to hunt down the Jedi. Many of these units were made up of clone troopers, although as the years went on, mostly non-clones would fill the positions. 
The armor worn by the Purge Stormtroopers is quite similar to what clone paratroopers used to wear. The only difference is that the Purge Troopers armor is black and resistant to lightsaber strikes. Not only were the Purge Troopers well versed in a wide range of blasters, they could also use melee weapons, which was far more effective against lightsaber wielding foes. So there you have it guys, those are some of the more interesting Special Forces units within the larger Galactic Empire. Let me know in the comment section below which one is your favorite, and also let me know of some of the ones that you like that I've missed in this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.